Today's reading begins in 2 Samuel chapter 4, starting in verse 1. When Saul's son heard that Abner was dead in Hebron, his hands became feeble, and all the Israelites were troubled. Saul's son had two men who were captains of raiding bands. The name of the one was Bana, and the name of the other Rechab, the sons of Rimon the Berothite, of the children of Benjamin. For Beeroth also is considered a part of Benjamin, and the Berothites fled to Gitaim, and have lived as foreigners there until today. Now Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son who was lame in his feet. He was five years old when the news came about Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel, and his nurse picked him up and fled. As she hurried to flee, he fell and became lame. His name was Mephibosheth. The sons of Rimon the Berothite, Rechab and Bana, went out and came at about the heat of the day to the house of Ishbosheth as he took his rest at noon. They came there into the middle of the house, as though they would have fetched wheat, and they struck him in the body, and Rechab and Bana, his brother, escaped. Now when they came into the house as he lay on his bed in his bedroom, they struck him, killed him, beheaded him, and took his head, and went by the way of the Arabah all night. They brought the head of Ishbosheth to David to Hebron, and said to the king, Behold, the head of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, your enemy, who sought your life. The Lord has avenged my lord the king today of Saul and of his offspring. David answered Rechab and Bana his brother, the sons of Rimon the Berothite, and said to them, As the Lord lives, who has redeemed my soul out of all adversity, when someone told me, Behold, Saul is dead, thinking that he brought good news, I seized him and killed him in Ziklag, which was the reward I gave him for his news. How much more, when wicked men have slain a righteous person in his own house, on his bed, should I not now require his blood from your hand, and rid the earth of you? David commanded his young men, and they killed them, cut off their hands and their feet, and hanged them up beside the pool in Hebron. But they took the head of Ishbosheth and buried it in Abner's grave in Hebron. Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and spoke, saying, Behold, we are your bone and your flesh. In times past, when Saul was king over us, it was you who led Israel out and in. The Lord said to you, You will be shepherd of my people Israel, and you will be prince over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them in Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was thirty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned forty years. In Hebron he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and in Jerusalem he reigned thirty-three years over all Israel and Judah. The king and his men went to Jerusalem against the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, who spoke to David, saying, The blind and the lame will keep you out of here, thinking, David can't come in here. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion. This is David's city. David said on that day, Whoever strikes the Jebusites, let him go up to the watercourse and strike those lame and blind, who are hated by David's soul. Therefore they say, The blind and the lame can't come into the house. David lived in the stronghold, and called it David's city. David built around from Milo and inward. David grew greater and greater, for the Lord, the God of armies, was with him. Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messengers to David, with cedar trees, carpenters, and masons, and they built David a house. David perceived that the Lord had established him king over Israel, and that he had exalted his kingdom for his people Israel's sake. David took more concubines and wives for himself out of Jerusalem, after he had come from Hebron, and more sons and daughters were born to David. These are the names of those who were born to him in Jerusalem. Shamua, Shobab, Nathan, Solomon, Ibhar, Elishua, Nepheg, Japhia, Elishama, Eliada, and Eliphalet. When the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines went up to seek David. But David heard about it and went down to the stronghold. Now the Philistines had come and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? The Lord said to David, Go up, for I will certainly deliver the Philistines into your hand. David came to Baal Perazim, and David struck them there. Then he said, The Lord has broken my enemies before me, like the breach of waters. Therefore he called the name of that place Baal Perazim. 
They left their images there, and David and his men took them away. The Philistines came up yet again and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. When David inquired of the Lord, he said, You shall not go up, circle around behind them, and attack them in front of the mulberry trees. When you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees, then stir yourself up, for then the Lord has gone out before you to strike the army of the Philistines. David did so as the Lord commanded him, and struck the Philistines all the way from Geba to Gezer. David again gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, thirty thousand. David arose and went with all the people who were with him from Baal Judah to bring up from there God's ark, which is called by the name, even the name of the Lord of armies, who sits above the cherubim. They set God's ark on a new cart and brought it out of Abinadab's house that was on the hill, and Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drove the new cart. They brought it out of Abinadab's house which was in the hill with God's ark, and Ahio went before the ark. David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord with all kinds of instruments made of cypress wood, with harps, with stringed instruments, with tambourines, with castanets, and with cymbals. When they came to the threshing floor of Nacon, Uzzah reached for God's ark and took hold of it, for the cattle stumbled. The Lord's anger burned against Uzzah, and God struck him there for his error, and he died there by God's ark. David was displeased because the Lord had broken out against Uzzah, and he called that place Perez Uzzah to this day. David was afraid of the Lord that day, and he said, How could the Lord's ark come to me? So David would not move the Lord's ark to be with him in David's city, but David carried it aside into Obed-Edom the Gittite's house. The Lord's ark remained in Obed-Edom the Gittite's house three months, and the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his house. King David was told, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him because of God's ark. So David went and brought up God's ark from the house of Obed-Edom into David's city with joy. When those who bore the Lord's ark had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fattened calf. David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was clothed in a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the Lord's ark with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. As the Lord's ark came into David's city, Michael, the daughter of Saul, looked out through the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. They brought in the Lord's ark and set it in its place in the middle of the tent that David had pitched for it, and David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of armies. He gave to all the people, even amongst the whole multitude of Israel, both to men and women, to everyone a portion of bread, dates, and raisins. So all the people departed, each to his own house. Then David returned to bless his household. Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David, and said, How glorious the king of Israel was today, who uncovered himself today in the eyes of his servants' maids, as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovers himself. David said to Michael, It was before the Lord, who chose me above your father, and above all his house, to appoint me prince over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore I will celebrate before the Lord. I will be yet more undignified than this, and will be worthless in my own sight. But the maids of whom you have spoken will honor me. Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no child to the day of her death. The Gospel of John, chapter 13 starting in verse 31. When he, that is Judas, had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and he will glorify him immediately. Little children, I will be with you a little while longer. You will seek me, and as I said to the Jews, where I am going, you can't come. So now I tell you, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, Where I am going, you can't follow now, but you will follow afterwards. Peter said to him, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered him, Will you lay down your life for me? Most certainly, I tell you, the rooster won't crow until you have denied me three times. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many homes. If it weren't so, I would have told you. 
I am going to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will receive you to myself, that where I am, you may be there also. You know where I go, and you know the way. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you such a long time, and you do not know me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. How do you say, Show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I tell you, I speak not from myself, but the Father who lives in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Most certainly I tell you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and he will do greater works than these, because I am going to my Father. Whatever you will ask in my name, I will do it, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Psalm 119, beginning in verse 17. Do good to your servant. I will live, and I will obey your word. Open my eyes, that I may see wondrous things out of your law. I am a stranger on the earth. Don't hide your commandments from me. My soul is consumed with longing for your ordinances at all times. You have rebuked the proud who are cursed, who wander from your commandments. Take reproach and contempt away from me, for I have kept your statutes. Though princes sit and slander me, your servant will meditate on your statutes. Indeed, your statutes are my delight and my counselors. My soul is laid low in the dust. Revive me according to your word. I declared my ways, and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Let me understand the teaching of your precepts. Then I will meditate on your wondrous works. My soul is weary with sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Keep me from the way of deceit. Grant me your law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. I have set your ordinances before me. I cling to your statutes, Lord. Don't let me be disappointed. I run in the path of your commandments, for you have set my heart free. Proverbs chapter 15, starting in verse 31. The ear that listens to reproof lives and will be at home amongst the wise. He who refuses correction despises his own soul, but he who listens to reproof gets understanding. Mm -hmm.